I've seen, believe, achieve. This is former UFC middleweight champion of the world, Michael Bisping. Paddy the Baddy here, and you're listening to Combat Sports UK. And you're watching Combat Sports UK. Hello, I'm Scott Bogey from Combat Sports UK, here with Ra Raphael Arnonov. After your second round of arm triangle choke victory against Jimmy Richardson at K Wars 174, how, how did that win feel? Well, that uh, that went actually exactly how we uh, we planned it to be because uh, we knew um, Jamie is uh, very tough and uh, we knew we're going to have to go through a very hard first round and uh, we expected exactly what we've uh, got actually in the first round. So uh, I, I won't say I survived the first round, but it yeah. wasn't the best first round. And uh, I knew uh, from the second round I'm gonna pick up the pace and uh, put the pressure on him, and uh, we knew we knew he's uh, he's gonna melt eventually. And do you feel like were you close from getting out in that first round, or did you know that you were going to survive? Um, again, sorry. Did you feel like there was you thought there was a chance you were gonna lose in that first round? No, you know I'm, uh, you know as a, as a, my previous uh, fight with uh, Omil, um, it takes me some times to some time to uh, to get started, and yeah. uh, usually my uh, my first rounds are uh, are hard and uh, and I, I need to get punched and uh, almost choked to get going. So uh, it, it was okay. I, I wasn't near to uh, to be knocked out or yeah. the the game wasn't uh, close. It was a good one, but uh, but I knew what I'm doing and uh, just managed to escape and uh, finish the round. And then uh, second round it went exactly like we wanted to went to go. And Jamie has had over twenty fights in his career, so it's uh, always tough fighting those guys. But you know that they're not going to be easy to get out. Yeah, I know. Uh, we uh, of course uh, studied Jimmy, uh, Jamie, and uh, we knew he's a veteran. You know, he's my age, but he's basically a veteran, twenty plus uh, professional fights. That's uh, a very big amount of fights. And even though he was on a three fight losing skid, uh, we uh, saw that as just he's gonna be at his best shape and yeah. he's going to be as, as hungry as ever because one more lose and, you know, it puts him in a place he doesn't want to be. For a fight, losing streak, it's a different streak, you know. And uh, we saw that as a very dangerous uh, Jamie Richardson and we planned for, for that exactly Jamie Richardson and he showed up, you know. He was uh, throwing uh, punches with power and... Uh, you know he uh he got he, he had a good guillotine and uh, it was uh it wasn't easy uh, first round but you know I managed to get out of the first round and then I knew uh my pace and my pressure and my punches uh, will still be strong and uh, and will be there and it worked. Yeah, and like you were saying, Jamie was coming into this with a free fight winning streak. This now extended his to four. So he was probably look going looking into this fight as if he doesn't get that victory, there is a good chance he does get cut from Case Warriors. So do, do you feel like that made him even more dangerous? Yeah, that's exactly how we looked at it, you know. Um, and uh, we never underestimated Jamie because, uh, you know, the guys he's lost to are top-level guys. One of them yeah. is the champion now. So he didn't lose to some, uh, you know, nobodies. He lost to a very high-level competition. And uh, I just wanted to prove I'm as well a very high-level competition, and I proved it. And throughout your career, you have fought at middleweight as well as welterweight. Do you feel like you, I know you were at Cave Wars 175. Was that kind of like a scouting, scouting mission for the champion, or are you staying at the welterweight level? No, I'm uh, I'm staying at Waller weight. Uh, my brother is uh is a uh, middleweight, yeah. and uh, we are working uh, a lot 
with each other, sparring uh, pretty intensely. And uh, Walter Weta is my weight class. You know, I'm uh, when I fought in middleweight, it was a short notice fight and uh, stuff like that, which I might do again. You know, short notice. I'm very, yeah. I'm healthy. You know, uh, I've just got back from uh, from training. I already got back to training like six days after the fight. Uh, did some grappling rounds and felt amazing. My body is super well, and the cut under the eye is closed. You know, and uh, I'm I'm very looking forward for a quick turnaround. Looking for uh, you know, there is three of Cage Warriors events in September, uh, which. One of them is, of course, the prize fighter tournament, uh, which a lot of welterweights are going to want to be there, of course. Yeah. But not all welterweights have 100% finish rate. <laughs> that so, is true. Uh, I'm, bringing the, I'm bringing the show, you know, when I fight, people tune in. doesn't matter because my fights are exciting. It's, as I always said, it's either I'm getting knocked out or choked out or I'm yeah. getting somebody knocked out or choked out. So when I fight, people tune in and that's why I think I belong to the Pride Fighter Tournament and I'm I'm already messaging Ian. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to hate me probably until <laughs> either he says no or he puts me in that tournament. <laughs> exactly. And speaking about your brother Eli, um, he is coming from the Contender Series he was unfortunately not able to get the victory. Could we see you and him both compete in Cage Warriors together? That's that's the we almost had it happening uh like four or three years ago, and an event here in Israel, big event. Um, doesn't matter the organization, but it was a big show, yeah. and uh, eventually uh, my opponent injured himself at the warm up very close to the fight, at the warm-up to the fight. And uh, it didn't happen. And me and my brother are just, now we're under both under Cage Warriors, you yeah. know, which is just an amazing platform. And, and we are so thankful for the guys at Cage Warriors, which is the best crew in the world. And uh, we are looking forward to, uh, my brother is uh, a bit injured now, but uh, he'll look to get back uh by maybe the end of the year or beginning of uh, 225 2025 and uh we're very looking forward to competing in the same uh event under cage warriors and how is it knowing that it is a family sport so you and your brother both train together at the same gym how is it having that family connection and would it be a dream to be on that same car together it's not just my brother it's also my sister as well she is the number one ranked BJJ competitor at her, at her weight class in the world. So it's the three of us. And, uh, you know, we just, we're just we uh, just motivating each other and pushing each other. So uh, when we uh, fight together, it's just going to be so amazing, you know, because yeah. we're always cornering each other and we're always in this together, as you said, training under the same gym. And uh, going through this journey uh, all together, you know, uh, just just pushing each other to the limit and uh, see who gets to the UFC first and uh, kind of competing. But at the same time, of course, uh, if he gets there first, I'll be happy as, uh, as I got there yeah. and he'll be happy if I get there first. And we will both eventually get there. We don't have a doubt about it. So it's just a matter of time, you know. And yeah. Uh, Fighting under the same, uh, same, you know, same night at the organization as Cage Warriors is just uh, unbelievable, and I have no doubt it will happen one day, sooner um, or later. And to start off your career, you are unfortunately went on a free fight losing streak. However, you have been able to turn that around, and you've now got four wins in the last five fights. What has uh, what's been the main thing you've changed? that had been able to get you that one to now? Yeah, so I think the main chi thing uh, that changed is uh, is I can point on two things. One of them is uh, I stopped chasing, uh, you know, I would say too much bigger of a goals and just told myself to 
enjoy each fight, you know, take every fight at a time and enjoy it. Just enjoy the process, enjoy training camp and uh, enjoy everything, you know. And and then I started to fight much more uh, freely, you know. And in addition to that, uh, you saw my wife in my corner and uh, yeah. she's one of the of my biggest uh, motivations. And uh, she's herself pursuing a professional career as a as a football referee, you know, and she's uh, sacrificing a lot uh, for this. And she's uh, just so so much helpful uh, for me, just you know, in fight camp with uh, with everything, food, training, you know, the house, everything surrounding, you know, just when you when you have the right people beside you and uh, who are pushing you and motivating you, uh, you just fight with a cleaner head and no uh, no thoughts or no uh, you don't worry about anything except fighting and then when you start that's exactly the moment when you start fi fighting like you know just freely yeah. and uh enjoy fighting and i remember speaking to you after the case wars 174 and you did not you did just recently get married so when's the honeymoon period going to happen cuz i know you're wanting to get back into that cage well, if I'll get to the prize fighter tournament <laughs> and win the prize fighter tournament, it'll happen so sooner than later. But uh, as I said, she's uh, supporting my goals and uh, supporting my career, and she understands that uh, right now I'm uh, in a in a peak. And as exactly as as I got married. Mid camp, you know, I was yeah. training for uh for Jamie Richardson and got married one month before the fight. So, and she supported it, and you know, it's not uh, I'm not taking it for granted. And uh, the same is with the honeymoon. You know, it might take time, maybe not this year, so maybe uh next year, but yeah. eventually we'll get it because I want to do it as well. You know, <laughs> but. Uh, right now, I'm, uh, I'm, 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 as I see it and as she sees it, uh, I'm in uh, some peak, you know, I'm healthy and uh, she wants me to fight. And, uh, you know, when I got back home, uh, there was a sign she made on the door to the to the house, you know, uh, I'm proud of you and uh, looking forward to see you compete in the prize fighter, you know. So yeah. we're in it together and uh, we're going to win the prize fighter tournament together and then we're gonna get our honeymoon and how does it feel knowing that she's there with you 100 percent, no matter what yeah it's uh it's just you know it's all i need that's uh, as simple as that you know it's very important and, and uh and that's why she's my wife <laughs> <laughs> and obviously fifty thousand will definitely help the honeymoon people period. <laughs> now, going into Cade, this Pride Fighter tournament, you would be four wins, one defeat in your recent fights, and you are two and one in Cade Warriors itself. Do you feel like that proves to Cade Warriors you're now ready for that step? Yeah, listen, I know that uh, in the Pride Fighter tournament, there no, uh, there's no, not going to be a uh, Easy fights. I know Omil Brown might be there again, yeah. and uh, there's Walter Waits in my division, which are extremely uh, tough matchups. And I'm ready for it. You know, I'm not going to the prize fighter tournament for the 50 Gs, although you know it's a uh, big money and stuff like that. But that's not why I'm going there. I'm going there to prove I belong. I'm going there to win both fights, and although getting the money is a beautiful bonus. I'm more looking forward to proving I belong to the top of the division, and I know a guy that wins the prize fighter tournament is going to probably fight for the belt. The belt is uh is going to be a uh, kind of unified because the champ never lost it. He went to the ultimate fighter, yeah. so it's going to be unified in September. I'm going to be uh maybe watching this fight uh, live, you know, maybe be there. Uh, so I'm looking forward for that fight and i know the prize fighter winner is gonna fight for the belt and that's why i'm doing this tournament no because of the 50 g's exactly although again it's an extra <laughs> beautiful bonus <laughs> exactly and do you feel like is there any i was gonna say anger but is there 
how do you feel knowing that the champion, yes, he did retake the belt to go into the Ultimate Fighter. However, he didn't win that, the Ultimate Fighter. He's came back and he's been automatically given that title shot. Do you feel like that is deserved or do you feel like he should have had a fight before the title? No, you know, uh, I think he he's a uh, totally, it's totally fun. He's getting uh, his title shot because, as you said, he never lost it. Although, and as well, the you know the fight at the uh, at the Ultimate Fighter, I watched it live, and uh, you know you get caught sometimes. It happened. He fought a very high level guy there, uh, a guy uh, which is, uh, in my opinion, is the favorite to win the the season, and uh, he got caught, and that's okay. And I think the champ is uh, the former champ uh, is a beast and uh, is a tough matchup for me as well. And uh, if he gets the belt, so I'll see him for the belt. If it stays uh, with the Irish guy, forget me, I forgot his name. Uh, so be it. He's also a tough matchup for me. I watched his fight. Uh, it was a five round war uh, live as well. Yeah. And. Uh, I'm all in for tough matchups. You know, I don't want to fight any easy fights. I never asked for easy fight. I, I'm a guy who says yes to whatever Ian asking me to fight. You know, I never picked an opponent. I fought a guy uh, in one week short notice who is now 10 and 0, you know. Uh, amazing fighter. But I never, I don't care who, when, or where. Just see me <laughs> and find out who is better. And sometimes I might lose. You know, Omil Brown is a amazing fighter. But again, at the fight with Omil, I proved I belong. And uh, I just made some mistakes. I've learned from these mistakes. And I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, maybe reach, rematch, rematch uh, with uh, Omil Brown uh, one day. Exactly. And... Do you feel like you be on Cave Wars 174? Obviously, the last Cape Pride Fair tournament was there. Do you feel like that has helped you know how to prepare for this, for the Cave Wars Pride Fighter last time? Because you've been able to see how these fighters did it. Yeah, you know, first of all, uh, being there with the fighters at the locker room and seeing them after the first fight, and it, it made it very interesting to me because... It's no easy, you know, uh, fighting one fight, then rest for two hours or three hours, and then fight another one. And at the same time, the guy that won the, the tournament was kind of, uh, you know, I don't, he won the money, so congrats to him, but uh, he did it like, you know, uh, with a boring yeah. style. And I'm, I'm not the type of guy to, uh, to be in a boring fight. So if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it in a in a spectacular fa fashion, you know. And uh, I think the the welterweight uh, tournament is a much more interesting tournament. I think the level at welterweight is uh, higher than the uh, level at bantamweight, you know. Uh, I actually think the two Italian guys that fought at the reserve bout uh, were the favorites for the. For the tournament, but they they found themselves in the reserve bout, so yeah. it happens. It might happen to me as well, but it is what it is, you know. Uh, sometimes it's just destiny, and uh, whatever happens, I'm happy with it. You know, I'm just happy to uh, to be fighting for Cage Warriors to to get to do what I love with the people I love, and uh, it's just amazing. You know, I'm healthy, and again, I'm very looking forward to, even if that's not the prize fighter tournament, so there is unplugged event, and then one more yeah. event a day after it in Manchester, so it doesn't matter what event, but I'm fighting on September, I'm a guy who fights very consi consi consistently, you know, even though I broke my hand in March, in the fight with Emil Brown and had surgery, I came back four months after later after it and won. So as, as long as I'm healthy, I'm fighting. You know, just because that's yeah. what I love to do. That make me feel alive, and um, I absolutely can't wait to compete again. And I don't know if you know this, but the guy who did win the prize fighter tournament actually did break his thumb in the first fight. Knowing, yeah, I know that. I know that because uh, I worked with him in the 
in the locker room and they were checking his corner was uh, checking his arm and was telling him it's swollen but it's nothing bad but you know mm-hmm. the way it was swollen is obviously was broken yeah. but congrats to him man he's a hell of a fighter and uh he came from a camp uh from Khabib's camp and you know you need to expect basically this in a in a tournament like uh prize fighter tournament because you get to fight two times in one night so maybe guys tend to think uh maybe i need to wrestle more or stuff like that but that's just not me you know so that's when i want to be there and i want to test it against other guys and we'll see what happened exactly and how has cave warriors been overall for you like how have they treated you man the, the cage warriors is just amazing you know i, I i'm honestly I'm just amazed with everything, you know, the way that uh, they treat us, the fighters, uh, the way everything is done is very professionally. And, you know, I've, I've fought in, uh, it's not my first time fighting uh, outside of Israel, had a few op- uh, opportunities to get to fight outside of Israel. And uh, with k Warriors, everything is just on point. And the stuff is, it feels like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a fighter. I'm not part of the stuff. But they make they make you feel like uh, they're your family and they're very very uh, worried about you, you know, and asking how are you after the fight and stuff like that. So it just feels uh, feels like home to me, and I'm looking to uh, stick to Cage Warriors until uh, basically I get my uh, UFC contract and uh, get to be one of those guys they post. Uh, like because I was in attendance for UFC 304 and there there were 10 uh, you have 10 cage warrior previously fighters yeah. and I'm looking forward to being one of those uh, guys who uh, fought from cage warriors and uh, got to the UFC through this uh, amazing organization and I was about to t- talk to you about that how do you see how big of an opportunity is it fighting as cage warriors knowing that it is kind of like a feeder into that UFC uh, what, what what's the question? Fighting for Cage Warriors, knowing uh, it's it's like a feeder, so they bring quite a few people that fight in Cave Warriors move into the UFC. Yeah, uh, that that exactly the what why I uh, signed with Cage Warriors, you, you yeah. know, because I had some uh, more options because uh, I was coming from a good winning streak, uh, although uh, you know I had I had more options and. Uh, so uh wanted to this particular option because as you said uh usually the champions uh get to get to the UFC uh directly from uh, even f- sometimes from the front door you know not having a fight the contender series uh but even after uh you know being uh, live on fights like uh the Luke uh, Riley uh, versus Luke fight and stuff like that and now seeing uh Luke at the contender series is just a motivation to me and being surrounded by guys who uh you fight with I, you know we I fought with uh Jordan on the same card yeah you know and I I saw him in ways and stuff like that and we uh we were cutting weight together and you know and seeing him uh just getting his uh shot at uh at uh, August now in uh, in what in this Saturday you know it, it it's just amazing and uh I'm looking forward to uh being one of those guys you know who you are uh, fight with at Cage Warriors and one day are going to be in uh, the UFC. And do you feel like the Israel MMA scene is on the rise? You obviously have already in the UFC, you have like Nathan Levy, you have your brother, you and Raz Bring all in Cage Warriors. Do you think that's it all starting to become on the rise now? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the The... Israeli MMA scene is uh, on the rise. Although, as a as a nation, we are going through some uh, rough times now. Uh, it just gives us uh, more motivation to raise our flag, you know, and to uh, to get those victories for our people to to have something uh, encouraging to uh, to hold on to, you know. And uh, we have, uh, of course, Harrell Cohen who uh, won Adam Cullen as well. Uh, who is also signed with Cage Warriors now, and uh, his uh, fight uh, got cancelled, but he'll get a, a big opportunity as well for Cage Warriors, and we got some other guys, we got another UFC fighter, uh, Yanala Shmoz, who is also an Israeli, so we got two uh, two Israeli fighters at UFC, and I think by the 
what by one year or two years from now we're gonna see probably four or five Israelis fighting for uh for the UFC and uh the the scene is on the rise you know there is a uh, very uh promising uh amateur prospects here and uh you know the th the scene is just getting bigger and bigger and the sport is uh, getting much more recognition here so uh I'm looking forward to uh to more Israelis getting to the UFC and even more Israelis signing with uh, Cage Warriors because I think uh, for us Israelis who are not in the States and even who are in the States, Cage Warriors is also in the States right now and it's just a, an incredible platform uh, for guys to uh, to fight uh, very frequently uh, because they're having event every one or two months and even sometimes more than one event in a month and it's just amazing platform and I, I'm I'm gonna make sure there is more Israelis uh coming to through Cage Warriors and uh hopefully eventing eventually getting to the UFC as well. Exactly. And from just researching you just a wee bit before this, I did find out you are actually a cop in Israel. How has that helped you become the enemy? Later. Do they help you because you're in the gym more? Yeah, well, um, being I'm not just a cop, I'm the in the special forces. Ah. Uh so yeah, being a, a cop of this type uh, is just you know making uh a fight not that of an uh something you know, I'm of course I'm getting excited to fight and stuff like yeah. that. I got the adrenaline rush, but uh being in uh much more difficult situations uh in my day job. Making a fight uh, just uh, in some proportions, and uh, I love both of my jobs. And uh, being uh, in the special forces, also uh, I have to be in a very high, uh, in very great shape. And I'm just combining the the both of them uh, very well because I need to be in shape for my fights, and I need to be in shape uh, in my uh, you know in my career as a as a cop. And uh, you know, I feel I feel like. Uh, since I've got that nickname and that entrance song, and I just got guy got my thing uh, going with that uh, the cop thing, yeah. and uh, I'm I've been recognized as one here in uh, in Israel now, and the police is very supportive of me going and representing uh, the country and the police on the same time, and uh, I'm just grateful, you know. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep uh, doing my job as a police and uh, serving my country, and uh, at the same time fighting for cage warriors and uh, getting it done, and in, uh, in style. <laughs> and just looking at your career as a whole, you were able to get the IW no IW double C title. How did yeah. the how was it in that moment getting that title, getting that belt around your waist? Wow. Well, uh, that was uh, very incredible because it was a uh, kind of a breakthrough fight for me here in Israel. And uh, since then, I've become a very uh, popular fighter here in the country. And it was in the biggest stadium uh, here in Israel. It was in front of uh, thousands of people. And it uh, felt amazing because I overcome adversity. It's usually the first couple of minutes in the fight. And uh, it was a good match. And since that fight, uh, I've uh, I've got into you know the streak and uh, and uh, I've just from since that fight and since getting that title, I got another title in a European organization. And and it just you know it just kept going and uh, going well for me. So I'm very uh, grateful for uh, that opportunity and. Uh, that uh, exact moment of uh, me uh, getting recognized here in the community as a good fighter, as an entertaining fighter. And uh, people are, are now, when I fight, people in Israel are sitting and watching. Exactly. And I can't wait to see you hopefully on that Glasgow card in that Pride Fighter tournament. Just before we get going, I'll give you the final word. Is there anyone you're wanting to shout out? Yeah, so... Uh, uh, final thing is first of all uh, thank you for uh, having me I ha had a really good time you know uh, also speaking to you after the event and uh, thank you for the opportunity and uh, one last thing as as you said uh, and as I said before my uh, nation is going uh, through rough times 
So I just uh, want to uh, pray for uh, our hostages uh, to get back home uh, safely and uh, healthy and uh, for our soldiers who are uh, fighting a much uh, tougher and much more serious uh, fight than I fight to get also as well uh, healthy and uh, safely home. And, you know, I just uh, generally pray for uh, good times in the world and uh, may we uh, as a nation know better times and uh, we are a strong nation and uh, we are fighting from uh, basically day one. And that's also what made me uh, a bit a, 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 a good fighter because it's in my blood and it's in our blood as a nation. And uh, I just uh, want to my nation to stay strong and uh, keep our head up and uh, better times will come. I have no doubt about it. And uh, that's it, you know. So uh, thank you again for the opportunity. Really was amazing. And uh, just I feel so uh, free, free speaking to you, you know, and uh, you're so awesome. And thank you again. And uh, hopefully seeing you uh, in Glasgow, you know. Well, I've definitely I've already got my ticket, so hopefully I will see you there. And I awesome, couldn't say it awesome. better myself. I hope you have a great rest of your day.